Hey there, my name is Chris Mango, and I'm the creator of Mango Mischief, a satirical, retro-style JRPG that's available for PC on Steam. If you're watching this video, you're about to see me playing my own game, showing off shortcuts and going into detail about the development process and intentions with essentially every aspect of Mango Mischief, so I think it's fair to say spoiler alert. If you'd like to play my game before watching this, the Steam link is in the description. I hope you enjoy my playthrough and commentary. Zoom is episode... Eight. We just got the ship. So now it's time to start uh, knocking out those dungeons. We have eight dungeons to get through. Um, there's a bunch of little side quests that we should be completing along the way. I was trying to figure out exactly how to path through the side quests and the dungeons in reasonable efficiency. Um, and I guess you'll see what I came up with. First of all, we did spend all that time uh, getting a couple uh, odds and ends before we received the ship. So it would be kind of helpful for me to actually equip the maxi amulet we just got. As well as, I am going to switch the message speed to instant. This will be way faster. Especially because one of the things I'm going to be doing first before entering uh, the first dungeon is doing the East Haversign and West Haversign um, renovations subplot. And so this will save a lot of time, because there's a lot of dialogue to sift through. This is a reference to uh, a very famous uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, Dungeon Master. Hello everyone, and welcome to the continent of Lyris. Hiya! I feel like we've been sailing and exploring forever. Sir, what time is it? It's high noon. We better get going. We have to make sure that we travel around the entire world. Well, you can certainly try. Do you have any advice for us? I'm sure that each of you will play a critical role in your team's adventure. What you decide to do and where you decide to go is completely up to you. Just ask yourselves one question. How do you want to do this? A little bit of an Easter egg for Dungeons & Dragons fans. It would be nice if I could catch the person running around Lyris at the moment, because that'd be the first mango I want to take care of. This individual right here, this mathematician. But we are going to skip through everything here, just to get the mango done. Uh, that mathematician, uh, he is researching the Seven Bridges of Lairus, which is uh, related to a very famous uh, math problem. And uh, his name is Euler. E-U-L-E-R. Sometimes pronounced Euler. Sometimes pronounced We're going to go back and forth between uh, West Haversign and East Haversign for a little while. I'm skimming through all of this. I'll start summarizing it as we move along. But the idea here is, obviously, you know um, that uh, this run-through uh, has tons of spoilers. And so, presumably, you've played the game through. Just at level 10. So what I'm doing now is basically just leveling up the rest of my classes, because East Haversign and West Haversun are chock full of free experience to reward you um, for exploring. And since I got a ton of gold from that one uh, super secret chest in the top right of Lone Gate after uh, obtaining the official seal to CC seals, uh, I have more than enough money to do the entire West Haversun, East Haversun um, side quest. I'm giving 2,000 gold. The boss, uh, the other mayor, is giving another 2,000. <laughs> and so what you'll see here is every time you leave East Haversign and go back again, as long as you're regularly contributing some money or just otherwise progressing the quest by maybe talking to the uh, mayor, um, West Haversign will become uh, better and better looking. So I have to go back to the mayor. Uh, the NPC who I keep talking to in that West Haversun shop, his name is Dizzy. That was actually an NPC, at least the, the sprite model, was uh, customized uh, based on uh, my Kickstarter campaign. That was one of the uh, many NPCs that Kickstarter backers helped create. You'll see a couple others um, this episode, actually. 
one of the rewards for uh, backing my Kickstarter. Uh, if you gave a certain level of reward, a certain tier, um, was to make your own NPC. Another one was to make your own enemy, where we went through all the skills and animations and all the different stats. So the mayor is basically, the mayor is okay with giving a little bit of money um, to help renovate West Haversheim, but at this point, uh, he's not willing to give any more money, so it's up to us to basically fund the restoration of West Haversheim. Every time I get to level 10, I'm just going to move to a new uh, class. This will finish up the advanced classes. And so, actually, in retrospect, I could even be way greedier in the early game, um, without needing to, to level up my characters very much, because the extra experience you get in West Haversign and East Haversign, if you go here first, basically fill up the rest of uh, the advanced tier. So this is something I have to keep in mind if I'm going to speedrun. Uh, I don't need to uh, really grind much at all in the early game. If I can just beat the captain, then the rest is uh, smooth sailing, I think. Pun intended, because, you know, sailing. I'm going to donate 8,000. I think this is probably it. Uh, you'll notice here the chest keeps uh, restoring, and you keep getting a new item uh, in the West Haversign 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, and 5.0. Maxitonic All is pretty good. Um, and obviously the entire town gets more and more restored. It looks better and better. Uh, if you watch the trailer for Mango Mischief, you'll see uh, at the very, very beginning of the trailer, um, the, uh, the scene kind of cuts through all five versions of West Haversign. A drowning brown town that was falling down, where all would frown when hanging around, received a perceived reprieve from those who believed that this place could achieve instead of just bereave. Basically, West Haversign was completely dilapidated, and the uh, very privileged East Haversinians wanted nothing to do with West Haversign, and so we stepped in and helped uh, Dizzy and the others uh, start renovating this town, and now it becomes kind of bustling and kind of a wonderful uh, other half of Haversign. West Haversign is now busy and bright, as if magically blessed with a dizzying light, a reference to the NPC Dizzy. With flowers and playgrounds and new infrastructure, we pray it may stay as an inclusive culture. With a sprig in our step, and a love that's worth marrying, let tomorrow be filled with pep, without a rack of guilt to be carrying. We're doing this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it completes our more quests in our journal. Secondly, another mango. Thirdly, here's a, a useful armor. The best armor of the game, Royal Regalia. There are exactly four of these that you can find, including this one here. Uh, you can also purchase them later on. Uh, there's a couple other reasons too, more experience. That rounds out our advanced classes. As you can see here, now we've got the master classes. Each of these say Alpha, because after getting each of these to level 10, there's also the Omega version. So Veteran, Virtuoso, Omega. Vogue, Alchemist, Omega. Ella Martyr, Omega, etc. Um, now this may seem really, really frustrating, because, again, every time you go back to a different class at level 1, you lose the stat bonuses. So if you go from Veteran Virtuoso Alpha level 5 or level 8 or level 10 back down to a different class level 1, you lose the stat bonuses. However, a way to kind of mitigate those issues is that every time you level up a Master class, whether it's Alpha or Omega, uh, you'll get stat boosting items that permanently boost uh, stats for your uh, party members. And so each level you grow whether it's level 1, level 2, level 8, level 10, each level you grow across any single master class, alpha alpha class, or omega class, will reward you with some uh, stat-boosting items that you can use on any ally you'd like. So we're going to switch to master class, and we'll see exactly what happens when we do that, because we'll still be going, gaining plenty of experience along the way. I'm level 1 alpha at this point. Um, there are really, really good items here. These are the types of permanent stat boosting items you'll be receiving every time you level up in Master, in the Master tier. Permanently increase the hit points of one ally. Permanently increase the magic points, the physical attack, the physical defense. Um, each character will end up earning, uh, different kinds of stat boosting items, and you can use them on whoever you want. So, if you want to totally deck out Sprig and just give him everything, uh, you can. Uh, I haven't ever really tried that. I like to kind of split uh, the stat boosting items across all four party members, but maybe you can totally make one or two characters overpowered and maybe they kind of carry the team for the most part. I have no idea. We got the mango from this individual. There are a bunch of NPCs here that say some fun stuff. In fact, there are three uh, blue, 
Uh, I think it's these three. Um, three blue uh, West Haverson NPCs who actually have dialogue boxes at every single tier of West Haverson, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, .0, as it gets renovated. Uh, their dialogue actually matches some East Haversonian NPCs. So there's some parallel dialogues going on between West and East Haversine. This is Dizzy, now he's the mayor, or one of the two mayors. And here's Validict. Remember him? He ran away. Well, if you gave him the sleep talisman that he basically just took and didn't pay you anything, um, if you actually did that and wasted your money, so to speak, he'll reward you with a ribbon. Now, we have two ribbons currently. There's a ribbon of regen HP. The wearer of this ribbon continuously regenerates 5% HP every turn. And there's and we also currently have a ribbon of TP. Now let's see, who do I want to give TP to? Um, let's go with Sprig. Because I will soon be getting a ribbon of um, MP. Which I'll use for, uh, I think, Marrow. We're going to skim through this as well. As you speak to some of the NPCs in East Haversign, you'll see how kind of stuck up they are. Um, I like this uh, dialogue situation in general, but we are going to skip through a lot of this because I want to get through all of the dialogue and actually move towards uh, the first dungeon of the game because we still have some battling to do. This is where the uh, old disgruntled mayor who is neglecting West Haversign has moved to. Uh, if you click on them, you'll see it's a little bit of a reference to, like, a Giovanni from Pokemon. <clears throat> There's two treasure chests up here. Just got some stat-boosting items. These are, again, the types of items you'll get when you grow levels, which will happen soon. Uh, before, these were, like, men-only and women-only stalls, bathrooms. And uh, after speaking with this individual, we realized, or this uh, shopkeeper, innkeeper, didn't really realize that there was a, a good reason to have them be uh, divided by any sort of sex or gender. And so we ended up actually uh, changing the signs to, this is a bathroom, anyone can use it, just don't make a mess and there won't be a problem. There wasn't really any reason to have... Um, Solo sex bathrooms. We're going to go through every single building, because every single building in East Haverson gives you a little bit of experience. You'll see now uh, we just gained some levels. And so if you go into the items, down here we're starting to collect stat boosting items. These were gained from the treasure chests in the, uh, in the inn, as well as uh, from leveling up. Now these don't cap at level at, uh, at 10 stock. All these other ones do. Uh, I didn't want to cap it at 10 stock here, because if you forget to use these, I don't want you um, permanently losing any stat boosting items when you should be uh, using them. Um, before I forget... Well, actually, we don't need anything from the shop. We're pretty much good from the shop, but we are going to get some stuff from the armory. Namely, we are going to get... Before I forget... Um, because of just how influential it is. I want to get four Confusion Talismans. Well, actually, I have two. As you can see up here, I possess two because I got them from uh, the Prominence Pass near the Ornithundra. I'm going to get two more, um, because if you've played this game, you know how annoying the uh, the bats in Infernal Inferno can be in terms of always confusing you. So this will make us immune to confusion later on when we need them. Um, I don't think I need any other armor at this time. However, I do want to get some weapons. As long as I get a myth, uh, one of each mythic, that should be fine. Now, I do end up finding them and earning them later on, but just so I have them reserved, I'm going to get one of every single mythic weapon here. These are the strongest types of weapons at this point in the game. You'll see how they'll end up becoming a little bit redundant. That's just enough. Now, I don't have enough money to get any of the Mythic Scepters, and that's not a huge deal right now. I can always sell some things. I could always sell some other weapons or armors or, well, can't sell key items. Um, or uh, other items here, if I really uh, wanted some more 
uh, wanted uh, some more gold to buy things. Um, but it's not a huge deal right now. My mages will be strong enough. More experience. Uh, another NPC that was created by uh, Rosie. Another NPC that was created by uh, a Kickstarter backer. This librarian gives you some information about how you should be reading any books. Um, each of the open books, we see one, two, three, four. Each of these open books gives you your master tier class tutorials, which happens at around the right time, so to speak, since we are just starting our master classes. I'm going to click each one of these. You'll notice this is pretty much the only area in the game that you can't run through, and the music is like really, really, really low, slash actually completely silent when you speak to someone, because this is a library. You should be respectful. Uh, this is another awesome NPC created by a Kickstarter back backer, which you should be clicking on your own time. And this one, I'm going to read through just because, again, it's a Kickstarter backer, but especially um, it is full of puns. Excuse me, but uh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying to figure out which books I should read next. Oh, wow, I love reading. Have you read the book entitled Becoming Weightless by the author Anti-Gravity? Yep, and I just couldn't put it down. I'm glad that you appreciate a good pun. I absolutely love them. I am immediately regretting this. Do you recommend any books for me to read? Right now I'm loving the book entitled How to Break Out of Prison by the author Jimmy Locks. With all the craziness in, the, in this world, I bet that story really helps you escape. I'm about to walk out of this game. I like you. My name's Mero. Nice to meet you. My name is Mr. Martin, and I don't mean to be a ham, but it's very nice to meet you too. I'm just happy you're not full of baloney. Mero, I think it's about time. Sprig, if you're just estimating the time, you should read the book entitled How to Approximate Things by the author, more or less. I have to say, I found that book to be about average at best. Can we set a timer or an alarm or something to end this dialogue? If you're into that kind of thing, I'd actually suggest the book entitled Training Dogs and People by the author Isabel Ringing. Just hearing her name has me salivating. And the book is certainly a real treat. It's times like these I wonder just how early we could have released this game if it weren't for the jokes. I guess I should stop getting sidetracked. Is that the title of the book by the author Candace Waite? I wish. Okay then, take care of yourselves. You too, Mr. Martin. We should at least receive a reward for surviving this conversation. Love potion obtained. Okay, I see what you did there. So we're in the library. I couldn't help but actually read through that dialogue, but we're going to continue skimming through pretty much everything else. Here's a little marketplace. It's basically another useful shop just to show how uh, wealthy East Haversign is uh, compared to old school West Haversign. Now that I'm level 5, I'm going to actually switch to a new class. It's not something you have to do, but you do gain new skills every level 5 in each Master Alpha class, and then you'll gain another skill at level 10. So you have to cross more levels to get another skill, um, but you'll continue to gain levels pretty fast once you're in these dungeons. The journal has a lot more tutorials now. Uh, before we had Sprigs class tree and Sprigs classes and skills, where if we scrolled down, we had information about novice, proficient, and advanced tiers, but the master tier information was unknown. But now that we've read at the library, we have information about the master tier classes. It lets you know that leveling up within each class gives you permanent stat boosting items for Sprig. Every time Sprig grows a level, you'll end up getting another HP up item and physical attack up item that you can use for anyone. The HP ups you get for the Master Alpha classes, and then once all eight of those classes hit level 10, you'll have access to the Master Omega version. So you'll get a lot of HP ups first, and then a lot of physical attack ups after. And if we scroll down, these are the eight different classes, and it tells you explicitly, new skills are learned at the following three benchmarks. So we're in Master Alpha right now, every level five and level 10, you'll get the first two skills that are listed. So Delirium, then Torpor Trigger, or Flawless Hold, then Solid Gold, or Fire Chaos, then Earth Chaos, etc. The final um, skill you get for a specific class would be for Master Omega. So when you're doing Veteran Virtuoso Omega, you have to go through the entire 10 levels before getting uh, the final skill, which is Medal of Honor, or Throttle Bottle, or Sentinel, or Train Platoon. These are very, very strong, obviously. You have to go through 10 levels to get a new uh, to get a new skill when you're that late in the game. So if you're trying to figure out 
uh, which classes to level up first or second or third, I definitely recommend uh, looking to see which level 5 skills or level 10 skills seem to be most appealing. Um, these aren't described in um, this tutorial on purpose, but at the same time you might be able to figure out what some of them are. For example, Fire Chaos and Earth Chaos obviously do specific elemental damage. Um, and obviously once you unlock the skill, you can always go back into the skill roster and read what the uh, specific skill does. All of them are listed up here, of course. Okay, um, there isn't much to do in here. Obviously, you can talk to some NPCs. There's a treasure chest up here, which I initially planned for you to go all the way around, but then I realized I'm pretty sure if you just press on the cake, it makes the chest open. And I kind of thought that was interesting, so I just uh, left it in the game. Each NPC in the game or, I'm sorry, each NPC in East Haversign does give you some sort of information, whether it's bragging about their wealth or giving you information about the dungeons. Haversign is the ultimate city with homes of the future and landscape so pretty. This town tops the bucket list before you're deceased. Just look no further than this gem of the East. East Haversign is also so rich that they can afford two signs, whereas the original West Haversign uh, regions didn't have any until they were fully re until it was fully renovated. East Haversign is known for its tourist attractions. You should speak to everyone to hear their reactions. A fraction of our faction has even taken action to restore lost traction with advice and benefaction. You should go into every single building. There's more experience. I couldn't help but put this in. Here's another chest. And it says, Thoughts and prayers obtained. Which, of course, if you look for it, you won't find it. Because it's not a thing. And then if you leave, the chest closes again. And you're like, hey, wait a minute. I'm good. I got more thoughts and prayers. Again, not a thing. Sorry, but thoughts and prayers aren't going to be helpful in this game either. Just like in real life. More experience obtained. These NPCs, again, will give you some information about the dungeons. For example, if I click, uh... I don't know, let's click this, uh person here. I'm very interested in stone gates and pillars, especially those that have inscriptions inscriptions written on them. I hear that there's one in Glacial Grove, all the way out near Snowburbia, but I've never had an opportunity to check it out for myself. It supposedly has some sort of special coded language inscribed on it. So sometimes you get references to other important things in the past. If you sail southwest of Lairus, you'll reach some islands and fairies, and eventually an underground cave. Only the hardiest of adventurers have survived the intense heat of that fire cavern. That's the, uh, Infernal Inferno. It is said that in the center of that crater is a fearsome monster who sucks the souls out of hapless humans. I bet it would really suck to need to travel there, huh? Now, any NPC that references a dungeon that you've beaten, like if we talk to this person again after beating Infernal Inferno, uh, there'll be a little bit of an extra dialogue where, in that case, Mero, the person who'll do the solo battle, um, will give a little bit more information, just as kind of a quest-completed um, reference, so you know you don't have to go back there. 25,000 experience obtained. Sprig is now level 3, everyone's level 3. This is another math reference about uh, a hotel with infinite rooms. Um, another Kickstarter backer, who also loves math, went to the, uh, made a reference to the Grand Hotel. We're gonna, again, click through all of this, because um, I don't want to waste everyone's time. But I strongly recommend you uh, read through the dialogue and kind of explore all the NPC conversations when you have the time. I have a trivia question for you. Is that how you always greet strangers? Yay for fun facts! If you answer correctly, you'll earn a special prize. What's the catch? Before asking you the question, I'll need payment in the amount of one mango. Just in case you don't answer correctly on the first try, do we need to give you an additional mango for every time we want to guess the answer? Can't you just reload your save file? Excuse me? Never mind. You may answer as many times as you wish for a chance to win the prize. You only need to give me one mango. Here you go. Thank you. Give me a second to eat it, and then we'll do the trivia question. Mango 14 has been completed. That was all three mangoes on the continent of Lairus. Um, we have no more mangoes left. We can always backtrack to get another set of three. That mango was delicious. Ready for the trivia question? I promise you that the prize is worth it. Yes, please. Sure, why not? Let's do this. I think we're ready. Okay, here we go. The man with white hair who was exploring Lyris and studying the Seven Bridges? He's a mathematician. How do you spell his last name? 
This information is not explicitly mentioned in the game. Again, it's Euler, E-U-L-E-R. His last name is Euler. How do you pronounce it? Uh, Euler. Could you say it again, please? There's no voice acting in this game, so you'll just have to read it. Ribbon of Regen, MP obtained. So we'll have Marrow use that. And so everyone's got a ribbon right now, except for uh, Marion. And let's make our way back down again. And I think we've checked out every single building here. Uh, there's one more building I actually forgot to check out, which is in West Haversign. And that is over here. Uh, this person wanted to make um, staying at the inn affordable, but at the beginning, because they had no money, they had to charge a little bit. But now, not only is this a free rest area, but you'll receive two complimentary gifts after you spend the night. You get a free mini tonic and mini magic, which obviously aren't that great in the later stages of the game. But uh, it's a nice gesture seeing the evolution of the inn and the shop and everything else. Speaking of which, this new armory is actually the final place. We can't afford anything in here yet. We need, is it 50,000 gold each? Sprig's ultimate weapon. So each of these ultimate weapons costs 50,000 gold, which is actually not going to be a big deal once we actually grind through the dungeons. Um, but you can't use them anyway until you get through all of the alpha classes and all of the omega classes, because once you beat all of master tier, then there's one final class for each character, and that's their ultimate class. Ultimate Sprig, Ultimate Marion, Ultimate Marrow, and Ultimate Arak. Uh, they each get one final uh, really super strong skill, if you ever reach level 10 with that. Although that's just kind of for fun, because of how kind of overpowered they are. And you can always talk to this individual if you want some other... There's Royal Regalia, some other really, really strong items. If you want to buy some ribbons, more ribbons. If you want to buy other maxi amulets, or the Royal Regalia, although I'm pretty sure we'll end up getting all four of them in chests. Um, anyway, you can buy tons of stuff here as well. Um, as far as ribbons go, you will get to wear more than one ribbon. At Master Tier Alpha, you can see we still only have access to one ribbon. But once you get to Omega, you can wear a second ribbon. And once you get to the Ultimate class, you can wear a third ribbon. And it doesn't matter which ribbons you wear. You can have all three Regen TP, or you could have one of each. Um, depending on how you kind of uh, spec each character, in terms of how you're boosting their stats, uh, you can choose whatever ribbons you want once you can afford them. Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to do here on Lairus. Now, I could go back and get more mangoes. But I think what I'm going to do here is... I think I'm just going to go straight into the dungeon. I think I've wasted enough um, time in this episode doing some side quest information. Uh, I don't have a perfect order of the order in which to do these eight dungeons, but I feel pretty strongly that the first dungeon that I like to do is a Stimfy Station, because again, you get more kind of free experience. So even if you're like pretty weak, um, simply moving from room to room levels your character up also. There's not that many battles either, which means you can beat the dungeon pretty fast. And that's helpful because you want to get through the first two dungeons as fast as possible. That way you can get to the 2.0 monsters. Because every time the monsters move up from 1.0 to 2.0 to 3.0 to 4.0, yes, they get stronger, but you end up getting a ton more experience in gold. And so if you're underleveled, the uh, the newly difficult and more experienced um, more experienced enemies will basically pull your uh, ranks up very, very quickly. They'll level you up very, very fast. Um, what do you want? Excuse us, but we're looking for pieces of trophy medallions. Do you know where we could find one? Get out of here. So stubborn, so rude. Listen, buddy, we don't want any trouble. Get out of here or I'll destroy you all. Boy, that escalated quickly. That really got out of hand fast. Anchorman reference? Hmm. I guess we should just leave... Yeah, that's right. You all need to go back to where you came from. This is really frustrating. Look at how strong and menacing I am. Hmm. And I'm so big that I literally take up the entire entrance of this building, which is incredibly inconvenient for you. I'm going to give you till the count of three. Hmm. One. Okay, let's go somewhere else. Yeah, let's get out of here. Two. We don't want to fight you. Actually, I think we do. 
What did you just say? I think we definitely want to fight you. What are you waiting for? Let's go. 1 HP. Nope. And he pieced out of there. No experience. But now we can access Demphi Station. He was just faking it. I, uh... And he'll do the usual spin and disappear. Alack, what did you... How did you... When did you... He was clearly bluffing. Good observation, Arak. Yeah, I had no idea. Now we can check out this new place. This is my preferred first dungeon. Excuse me, can you tell us where we are? We are looking for medallion halves. You've come to the right place, but first you'll need to be tested. I'm just glad that I don't have to decipher a bunch of anagrams again. This is a reference to the fact that I purposely used the same sprite NPC, or same sprite picture as the NPC in front of the old broken bridge, where uh, Maragon spoke only in anagrams about rubble. Um, I just changed the color. This is Stimfy Station, and if you can complete the challenges in each room, you'll learn an opportunity to fight for a piece of the Sage Medallion. Once you clear a room, the door to the next room will unlock. How many rooms are there in all? By now, I think we both know that the number of rooms entirely depends on just how fast this background music is capable of going. What are you talking about? Obviously, as you per proceed through pretty much every dun dungeon in my game, it keeps uh, a similar um, song, but the song speeds up to, to basically uh, indicate that you're getting closer to the end or the boss. Anyways, you'll need to be perceptive and question everything. You mean like how the entrance and exit to this place don't line up properly? Iraq, what did you... How did you... When did you... Exactly. Now, if you don't mind some strangeness, head through the door on the left, and then through the door on the right. This should be fun. Hey, wait a second. How did you even get to this island if we're the only ones who own a ship? Magical seahorse. Remember, her, uh... Maragon other sprite version had the horse in front of the uh, bridge, but we're going to call this one a seahorse because you'll see some blue horses in later rooms. Sure, why not? So this whole exit and entrance not lining up is a reference to this. If you go in, see how we're not lined up here? Usually you're right in front. It's this sort of like weird puzzle perception type situations that you're going to be experiencing here. It's basically like, like an escape room type puzzle type room. It was really fun to make this dungeon. Uh, this sign is actually needs to actually be read from right to left, and you can kind of, for the most part, ignore the punctuation. Forget everything you know about your quest, the rules, restrictions, and all the rest. Stimfy Station's rooms may drive you up a wall, but to access the boss, you must complete them all. Driving you up a wall is a reference to one of the uh, rooms here, where to actually exit the room, you have to literally walk up the wall. Um, getting to mess with the... Uh, the tile set and the assets on the developer side is kind of fun. You can, of course, talk to the gold statue, heal up. Uh, this will do nothing. There's nothing here. Because, again, you should be going to the left and then the right. When you go to the left, you're in a new room, but it looks exactly the same. 25,000 experience obtained. We're level 5. I'm going to switch classes again to level 1. <laughs> it might make the next battle a little bit difficult, because obviously we're still kind of low level-wise. But we're on all level 1s. And this room looks identical. I'm going to save the game because we're about to fight. 23,000 experience obtained. Here's a seahorse over here. It's just a blue horse. It's not actually a, a seahorse. Spree is now level 2. And this white spiral is going to basically make a beeline for us. You can't really escape that one. Water permeability. So... Every attack, as well as the name of the enemy, provides a clue to the room. Now, it may or may not be super useful. Um, I guess I should have equipped some of those mythic weapons, huh? I think I bought the mythic weapons and didn't actually equip them. But at least I still had the, uh, the fire weapon on. Um, Righteous Flames? <laughs> okay. This seems doable. Don't need to use Pyromancy all because there's just one enemy here. Save the alls for when you have a lot of uh, a lot of enemies. Um, so Warper implies that we are going to be warping in this room, and Water Permeability, the permeability, the passing through, is a nod to the fact that once we warp from beacon to beacon, um, we're totally going to be able to uh, to just pass right through the wall. I'll show you what I'm referring to in a second. Later rooms, you might actually want to. Consider what the uh, enemy name 
and the skill are actually saying or cluing you in about, because some of these rooms are a little bit more difficult than others. Uh, we're back with the rack. Uh, let's just use Nutromancy. We take a decent amount of damage, although it's not really anything you can't handle right now. Um, let's just do a regular attack. I didn't want to wait for everyone else to go. Uh, nice enough for level up. We will level up reasonably fast, especially since we're only like level 1s, 2s, and 3s right now. So here's the beacon. So if you try to get to the button, if you try to get to the dark red beacon, you can't get there. But if you warp, you're kind of locked in here until you press the button. The door is now open, and now, just like that, we uh, can pass through. Each floor basically has one type of enemy. 25,000 experience obtained. Before I forget, I want to equip a better weapon. Um, it doesn't really matter which one I choose. I'm going to go with the dark one, because I know I'll be fighting a light enemy next floor, maybe. Um, and I'll go with Mythic Mace here. Now, if you try to race through this entire maze, it's not going to get you anywhere. You simply can't get there in time. You'll get to, like, maybe over here. It's impossible to get there. Uh, but that's okay, because all you really need to do is go up here. That being said, I do want to fight each enemy just to show you the, uh, the tricks and tips, or the, uh, the hints that each um, enemy gives you. I'm pretty sure... These individuals are... Uh, I purposely made them, I think, weak to like every element. This says Crystal Distractor. So the idea here is that, again, the fact that you're opening up the crystal is basically just a distraction. Uh, let's go with... Pyromancy All. That way I can deal damage to both. Bridge of Darkness. That's the name of the skill. That's literally what we're going to be walking over, a Bridge of Darkness. Uh, let's try Triple Swing. Because his weapon is imbued with something. I think it was Darkness. Uh, Umbermancy All or Lumamancy All. As long as you're not using Nutromancy, you'll get a super effective bonus off of this. Let's just keep it going. Elite Beat. Now, his magic attack is um, much higher. You can see here there's a, a double plus. The double plus is only something that enemies can use. Um, like if you if they can buff themselves and then they can like super buff themselves with a double plus. I didn't want to make that an option for allies because stacking a single plus and a double plus made the whole situation like super overpowered and it became a huge pain in the neck to get rid of regular buffs when you actually successfully use like a super buff. Um, it became very, very difficult to balance. Uh, blindness, darkness, obviously can cause blindness. Seems that everyone here is blind, so I'm going to do this. We're going to use Redemption, because that's not going to miss. And then here, I'm going to use See the Light, removes blindness from all allies. I was considering using Citadel, but Citadel I definitely want to save when there's a bunch of different types of status ailments, like if someone's blinded and another person's paralyzed. I can just get away with just using See the Light. All gone. Just in time to use a leap beat. Nice. Now we can focus on this one enemy. Oh, no blindness that time. That's nice to see. Huh, nice to see. Now let's use a triple swing. Very nice. And let's finish you off, hopefully, with Lumomancy. Any element should be super effective here. Level 4. We're not level 5 yet, so I definitely want to get that skill. And now I can just casually just walk over. Of course, you can. if you talk to the horse, the horse can um, transport you home. Or to the beginning of the dungeon, if you get like super lost. I get free experience from moving to the next floor. You'll see here there's a whole bunch of beacons. Spring is now level 5. Alright, so we just hit level 5. I'm going to switch class again. And I don't know if this is the ideal way to do it. Uh, or if this is the fastest way to um, level up. I'm going to actually take the uh, the fight here. I'm not going to bother trying to, to dodge. Um, the names of these are Code Breakers. And you'll see their uh, 
attacks in a moment. I'm going to use some Snare to slow them down a little bit. They might still attack right after Marion, though. Oh, Mero got to attack first because everyone else is slowed. So I'm actually going to mess with them and use Alacrity. Um, or I'll use Umbermancy all because I know they're actually weak to uh, Dark. See how they're kind of gray? That means they're light-based. So I'm going to use um, something that attacks all the uh, enemies with Dark. Konamiba. Emphasis on Konami. And then BA at the end. Their names are Codebreaker, and their skill is Konami B. Um, the Konami Code, one of the most famous codes in all of video games, um, is exactly how you can solve this specific floor, uh, this specific room. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, let's see. Arak and Marion both have Umbermancy All which means that beating these uh, these enemies is pretty easy. I can just spam Umbermancy all. I'm trying to look for things that can hit everyone. Oh, that's pretty good. One Umbermancy is all I need. I don't need to use Umbermancy all. And so now I don't have to worry about rushing. So, well, I'll show you what happens here. So first of all, the horse uh, can escort you outside, but we're good. Um, if you, once you press the button, there's a very short timer. You can hear it maybe speed up. And so you want to get through all of the beacons as fast as possible. And it's that fast. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. That is most of the Konami code before you press the uh, the B and the A buttons. Um, so you can trial and error it. You, you, know, you can use brute force and kind of tinker with all the different paths. But if you recognize that it's a reference to the Konami code, uh, that speeds you through that uh, room pretty fast. More experience, level three. This uh, enemy you can't really dodge too well. Escape artist. We'll talk about what kind of clue that gives us in a second. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can slow them down. Although I am going first, so let's let's try to do some damage. Um, let's use devastation to start. These battles are getting a little bit harder because you know they ought to be. Um. Let's see what I can do with Alacrity. They might be resistant to certain um, ailments. Notice how no status ailments actually worked. It was just the uh, the debuffs. That's okay. Maybe we can get a little bit of damage done. Looks like Marion gets to attack twice because uh, she's awesome. Or her, uh, her agility is just so high. I tried to poison, but again, they're resistant. Sometimes it just takes another attempt or two, but I'm pretty sure I made them uh, completely uh, immune to status ailments. I'm going to use a honey tea on a rat. And we just need to put out some damage here, I think. Once we get them down to like only two or so. It'll be a little bit more manageable. Sprig can't use any uh, special skill at the moment because he's silenced. I don't even think these escape artists are um, weak to any specific element either. You'll notice their skill is horse voice. Also, there's no element in front of the horse voice, so it doesn't give away any element, which implies that um, there isn't one. So you notice here, I have three silenced allies right in a row, and then Iraq. That's a little frustrating, because Iraq can use um, a skill or the TP to get rid of all the silenced, but they just might all get silenced again right afterwards. So we'll see how this ends up playing out. We'll just do regular attacks to kind of whittle down the enemy who's almost dead. Almost. And uh, let's see. Articulation can remove silence from all allies, so they're all silence free now. All right, looks like the um, escape artists, their health was so low, or I'm sorry, their agility was so low that we actually could still get off um, a second round of attacks. 
I'm going to use Neutral Slash because I just want to make sure that I hit, which didn't happen, but I didn't want to use a delayed attack that could potentially let them attack before Marion um, got her attack off. Like how Elite Beat and Opportunism takes a little bit longer to attack. There's a waiting period. Alright, Arrakis Silence, that's generally not good. Uh, let's go with Elite Beat. It looks like she'll still get to attack in the same spot. Uh, for Sprig, let's see if we can do a good amount of damage. It's not bad. Uh, Arrak is just going to be using a plane attack because he's silenced. For Mero, let's see what we can do here. Good. Now, in terms of catching the hints for these uh, enemies, their names are Escape Artist, and their skill is called Horse Voice. Horse, uh, the homonym, it's a reference to the fact that we're going to be talking to the horse to escape. Because you can walk around aimlessly in this room for 5-10 minutes, as at least one of my playtesters did, um, to try to figure out where there's a hidden whatever. But the uh, secret to getting out of this room is to have the horse open up the door for you, which I'll show you in a second. This takes a little bit longer because half our... Uh, Allies are silenced, but that's okay. We'll just whittle them down, and uh, maybe we'll get to gain a level. That'd be nice. Alright, so Horse and Escape did not level up, so I'm just going to play it safe and use a little bit of mini heal action here. If you try clicking on the door, it is locked. If you try clicking on the button, nothing happens. You can walk around aimlessly all you want. The key here is to speak to the horse. Now normally, whenever you talk to a gold statue or a horse and say, I want to escape or I want to head back to the beginning of the region, um, you always get a second, like, are you sure double check. And so if you were to, if you were to select go to the entrance of Stemfy Station, whether you're at a healing statue saying go to the entrance of a dungeon or any other horse, um, it'll give you a like, are you really sure you want to escape? Because it would kind of stink for you to have to redo the area if you accidentally just click too fast. Now, in this case, not only is there a yes or no, but there's also a can you open the locked door, which is the only instance of having some, like, weird plot twist whenever we're talking about returning uh, to the beginning of an area. Can you open the locked door? Sure, no problem. And that's it. Now I can just walk through 25,000 experience obtained again. Sprig is now level 4. Everyone is level 4. Uh, now here, um, beating the enemy will make the door unlock for a very, very quick amount of time. So you kind of want to race it back. If you stay like right around here, this should be more than enough... Um, this will give you more than enough time to uh, get to the door. It only lasts for like 2-3 seconds. Switch Witch. Um, so again, defeating these will be the switch that unlocks the door. Uh, water Chaos looks pretty good. It's a double water hit. Whenever you use the Chaos skills, they attack randomly, which isn't great, but it's the trade-off. You, know, you can either attack a single enemy of your choice, or you can do a Chaos spell from either Sprig or Marion that attacks two at random. Now, of course, Mero gets the all spells. Costs more magic points, but you get to hit everyone. Unless it misses. It targets everyone, at least. Let's do... Let's do... Accentuate again on Marrow. And for Marion, let's just use Water Chaos again. Maybe it'll hit some of the uh, enemies with more HP. No. That's not a big deal. I was hoping you hit two enemies that have 3,000. That way, they're all lower HP. You notice this attack is close proximity. In other words, we need this, this enemy to be close proximity to the door. It has to be close by the door, that way you can get to the door in time. Nice easy kill there. Level 5. First I'm going to escape. It was very fast. I can completely ignore this one if I want to, but I am going to fight it um, just to show you what those clues are based on the name of the um, enemy and the name of the attack that it uses.
Uh, I believe this is Earth, so I, I believe we want to use Wind. Now, I haven't unlocked the Wind Chaos yet, so I'll just get to do only one Wind Attack. Um, so maybe instead I try to poison it or something. Can I get away with poisoning anyone? Nope, doesn't look like poison's gonna work. Left a lot to be desired. A weird name for a skill, but literally, the way to beat this is to move to the left a lot. Uh, you're gonna be basically climbing up the wall, um, and then you're you're gonna climb up the wall all the way to the left of the floor, and you know you're gonna climb the wall, because their names are wall climbers. We don't have Aromancy all. That would be really nice. So let's actually use Alacrity, see if we can mess with some of them. So again, it looks like they're pretty resistant to status ailments like Poison and Paralyze and Charm, but it looks like they can also um, still be debuffed or nerfed in terms of their stats. So let's just do a whole lot of uh, all skills, like Umbermancy all or Frenzy. Again, Marion doesn't have any of those, although we could slow them all down. Maybe that'll help. They are susceptible to slowing the agility, although in this case it didn't really help much. I have to keep an eye on Sprig's health. It seems that Sprig got uh, randomly targeted a whole bunch of times. Sprig might actually die, and that's okay. And there goes Sprig. So we need to be a little bit careful here. We need to pay attention. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use... I could use a Revive or Revive Plus, restoring 25 or 50. Um, I'm just going to use a Revive, because I have 10 of them. I'm already maxed on Revives. And then, when it's a Rack's turn, I'll replenish a lot of HP. But I really should be paying attention to actually dealing damage. Uh, let's keep the health up. I could do Mini Heal All or Meta Heal All. Uh, I'll show you what Mini Heal All looks like in terms of replenishing the HP, and then we'll contrast that with Meta Heal another time. So, we did about 15 to 1800 replenished, which is pretty good. Notice how we keep getting to go again and again because they're all slowed. Um, aromancing one individual might not be as helpful as hitting them all with something that's not super effective. I'm not sure though. Finally, we get the elite beat off. And let's do another frenzy. Now, if I had a wind weapon um, equipped with... Uh, I guess Sprig would be the one who can equip the wind weapon. Frenzy would be amazing. Using Frenzy with Sprig and doing wind damage, that'd be great. Let's hope that Sprig doesn't die again. Now we'll use Meta Heal All, just to contrast. It costs three times as much MP. Now, I don't know if we'll get to do triple healing, but if you need to heal more, you know, you gotta spend the MP for it. Okay, so it only did maybe like 60-70% to 70 more healing for now, but maybe that's worth it in some contexts. Also, keep in mind, I've been whittling all six of these down kind of evenly, which might not be the best move. Um, it might be a better move to knock out one or two pretty fast. Let's see if we can vanquish one of them. Hopefully this takes out a second wall climber. And uh, we're almost through this dungeon already. Let's go with Nutromancy on someone. The strongest enemy I'm going to go with to knock down the HP a little bit. Let's use Devastation. Just to get four hits off. They, they're also successfully debuffing me. I mean, the luck part doesn't matter too much, although that doesn't mean that I'm not going to get any... Uh, I won't get many critical hits. Uh, for Sprig, I want to keep using Frenzy, because that seems to do a decent amount of damage to everyone. For Marion, I'd like to keep using Reap the Whirlwind, although I'm out of mana, it looks like. So maybe I'll use Marion to, um, to uh, I guess, pick an item. Mini Tonic All, maybe? Just to give everyone a little bit of help. Let's see. Okay, almost dead. And let's use Nutromancy. Again, we're running low on MP for Marion and Arak. They seem to be pretty safe right now. If everyone is focusing now on Mero, Mero might have 
died or gotten knocked out. <laughs> Frenzy again. Keep in mind, Frenzy is also reducing my HP, so I have to keep that in mind. Um, let's just use another all attack. Will it knock them both out or just one? So close. And it doesn't matter how much HP you're left with, as long as you get the win. And let's see what we get here. Level 1, level 2. Remember, we were, like, the lowest that our class could possibly be. So that's gone. If you ever want to replay an enemy, whether it's to get more... to see the clues again, or just kind of grind some experience, you can just leave the room and come back. And then the enemy will return. But this is what we're talking about with wall climbing and left a lot. We had to go all the way to the left. And now it's time for some uh, free experience. This room is a reference to Marion's cutscene that we saw, you know, like six or seven times, uh, where it was dark and you had the dialogue between Marion and uh, Marion's mother. This is a reference to Iraq. Uh, Iraq's cutscene with uh, Rania being excited about the flowers. This is where Mero shot the uh, fireballs. Um, every door here is a fake door, except for the one back here at the bottom right. These rooms, these kind of weird wonky rooms here, are also references to, at the end of Quest 64, my Guilty Pleasure game. Um, terrible JRPG, but uh, still a game I like to play anyway. At the end of Quest 64, there's a lot of weird rooms that kind of navigate through the uh, the universe of the game. That you just ha have to go in a whole bunch of different doors and stuff. It's kind of weird and out of place. Uh, this is where Sprig and the King were having conversations. I'm level 5 now. So I'm going to switch to another class. Level one with everyone. You have to kind of chase down the doorway a little bit here. Here's the final one. This room actually looks pretty normal compared to the other rooms. The walls and crystals look solid and no hidden tricks or anything. Just four switches. And the music, it stopped. Arak, I think you're the only one who's been hearing music. It's okay, we're close to the boss now. I don't know how you know that, but okay. Should we press a switch? Should we each press a switch? I think so, this should be an easy one, right? Four switches, four characters, what could go wrong? If we each step on a different switch, then the crystals should all disappear. For example, this red switch. Perfect, everything's working according to plan, right? Perfect. Just like we thought. Way to go, Iraq. So far, so good. Uh-oh. Iraq, that switch reset really quickly. Oh no. We made it this far and now we're stuck? Damn, we were so close. Go on without me. Absolutely not. Look, maybe the other switches can help. Yellow switch opens the yellow crystals. Blue switch opens the blue crystals. And the green switch opens the green crystals and the door. The green switch opened up the door, which is better than nothing. I think that whoever is on the green switch will have enough time to cross the crystal gaps before the switch resets. And then we can reopen the door for him by stepping on the green switch again. How do we know which of us should fight the boss? Iraq, we all know that it needs to be you. There was information presented earlier on, uh, explaining how each boss battle in these eight dungeons have to be solo fights. It's not going to be all four of the teammates against the boss and potentially their, uh, um, their own lies. It's always going to be one of these characters. So... You can attempt to make one or two of your characters kind of overpowered, but at the end of the day, everyone's got to be able to pull their own weight. We can all tell how motivated you are. Yeah, you're filled with determination. Shout out to Undertale. And you're the most perceptive one here. We'll get half of the Sage Medallion, Iraq. Here's the wind-up, and the run. 
He really took his time with that one. How do I get back to your side of the room after I face the boss? We can't worry about that right now. Could you imagine us all getting this far only to permanently lose our healer this late in our journey? Rest in peace, Aerith. Surely such a shocking plot twist like that would be, a catast would be catastrophic for us. A little fourth wall break here. We're all looking at the, uh, the player. I think I have a way for one more person to join me on this side. Which is true if we could use a second person. If Mero walks up to the blue crystals, and then Sprig hits the blue switch, and then Mero moves forward, and then Marion hits the green switch... Because basically, you can get a second person across. Iraq, you know that the battles for the medallion pieces must be fought alone. Ugh, stupid arbitrary rule. Literally, no one would know if two of us attacked the boss together. You'll be fine, Iraq. Nothing to worry about. Good luck. Do a little healing. We'll do a little saving as well. It's been a while since I saved, and it wouldn't be the first time that my uh, computer crashed, if, uh, if it did. All right, so now you've got this area here where it doesn't matter how far to the right or left you go, uh, everything gets kind of all messed up. The only thing you can do here is talk to this note, and it's all the same note. It just keeps repeating and cycling. Out to lunch, be back later. What the heck? Game over screen. This also ensures that you'll unlock the, the game over music. I think this is a trick. Remember, Iraq is super perceptive. Yep, you're right. This is uh, Crafted the Coyote. One of my Kickstarter backers really, really, really wanted me to include someone, really wanted me to include someone who didn't look like the normal sprite artwork. So we went with a completely different um, uh, picture altogether that was actually drawn. Who are you? The name's Crafty. You're not from around here, are you? Of course not. I'm not even the same art style as you. I'm just another adventurer who got lost a long time ago. Do you have half of the Sage Medallion? No, but I can lead you to the one who does. Follow me. So, we should be following him. It also says, Closely follow your crafty friend, for he is the one who'll bring you to the end. Pay attention to the spot where he disappears, and go there or else you'll have lost all your peers. Uh, we're gonna beat him, though. We're gonna get to the ditch. It's like right below here. And it's his version of spinning and disappearing. We're going to save one more time. And here is the boss of this dungeon. You'll see a bunch of references to The Princess Bride, because I am a fan of that movie. Hilarious movie. This book is opened to a page about six-fingered men. Oh, hi there. Did Crafty bring you here? Yes, he did. My name is Arak, and I'm looking for the Sage Medallion. Crafty said he would lead me to someone who has half of it. Well, that would be me. Qualia Quesnelia, queen of flowers and lover of stories, at your service. In fact, right now I'm reading a book about a relative of mine, Buttercup. Princess Buttercup, again a reference to uh, the Princess Bride. I know all about you and your quest, and I know about your friends too. What? How? As the keeper of a sage medallion piece, I make it a priority to educate myself on as many things as possible. Would you mind if I challenged you for ownership of your sage medallion piece? Ooh, as long as it's a battle of wits. As you wish. I am well versed in the ways of your world. For your sake, I hope that you are too. Let's go. So the way this works is you cannot deal damage directly to Queen Qualia Quesnelia. Uh, what you can do, though is you can use, you can whittle down this light enemy or this dark enemy. And once they hit zero, you get asked a trivia question. And if you answer eight out of the 12 trivia questions correctly, you'll end up beating Queen Qualia Quesnelia. It doesn't matter which one you attack first. Um, the six trivia questions from the dark enemy and the six trivia questions from the light enemy um, parallel each other. Um, so. The first trivia question each is the same type of trivia question. The types of trivia questions are things like, what's the name of this character in the game? Or, uh, which of these is a class your character can take? Or, what, uh, where do you find this background music? It's those sorts of uh, trivia questions. Notice here I keep gaining HP when I 
uh, attack. You'll see it actually right now. Um, I'll gain some HP because it is my ribbon uh, working. Well, after the trivia question's over. Who, what is the name of the man who's afraid of bats? That would be Ventanas. Every other name here is a reference to something. Uh, Zels was a, a character at the very, very beginning of the game, speaking to Mero. Um, once Mero left the Hotfoot Hut, uh, also a Quest 64 character. There's a lot of references in here, either from personal family members or friends, or from other games, or just other references in Mango Mischief. Like, obviously, the Captain, Arak, and Sprig uh, are all members of this game. But the answer here is Ventanas. And I should gain some health. There's That's the uh, Ribbon of Regen HP working. I could... It, I could kill off this uh, this enemy six times in a row, or I could alternate. Doesn't really matter. You must correctly answer eight questions out of a total of possible a total of twelve possible questions. Same information every time, but another question. What is the name of the woman who you, Iraq, are trying to heal? That would be Rania or Rania. We'll just stick with the Umbermancy. I can just press spacebar faster that way without having to alternate between Umbermancy and Lumermancy. You can see that they're dark and light type, not just by their color, but whenever they attack, uh, you'll see the light icon and the dark icon as well. You must correctly answer, blah blah blah. How many medallions are you, are you retrieving? There are four medallions total. Um, strength, Skill, Soul, and Sage. Each of those medallions is split into two, but the number of medallions that you're retrieving is a total of four. Every name, whether it's the monster or the skill, um, is a reference to something relevant, or a pun or something like that. Which the following is a class that Sprig can join. He can be a Vogue Alchemist. You notice we kind of get first attack again every time we correctly hit uh, Queen Qualia Quisnelia, which is why you might notice that some of these enemies kind of shuffle to the back of the line, and we get like a free hit again. I'm running a little bit low in MP, but obviously I still have plenty of items I can use. Which the following is a class that Marion can join, Phantom. I don't think we'll need too many trivia questions um, from the uh, the dark enemy up here. So uh, the trivia questions that I don't get to because I don't need to get to them, uh, you'll just have to figure out those answers on your own. Notice I like never taking damage, and it's because I've got the ribbon on. If you don't have the ribbon on, then your HP will be whittled a decent amount to the point where you'll probably need to use like a metatonic or something, or you could just heal yourself. What's the, where is this background music featured? This is Old Providence Town. I'm not sure if you can actually hear the music. Old Providence Town. Amazing. Two more. So we completely killed off this one. Now we've got to move on to the next one. Looks like I'm, I'm going to need to get a little bit more magic. I'm so close. I just need two more trivia questions. Lumamancy on this dark enemy. Um, actually, I guess be super greedy and use quid pro quo. Let's see if that was a mistake. That would uh, really kind of suck if um I made it through all of this only to uh die right now. There is Luma Quad, which for a lot of magic points you get to hit four times. Uh, light damage, which is amazing if it keeps hitting this guy over and over again. Um, but there does run the chance of us accidentally attacking the queen, which just won't do anything. It'll just be a waste of an attack. What's the name of the king? That would be Guffin. Meliodas, anime reference. Uh, Jalal, that's a reference to druids from Diablo 2. Anyways, uh, let's use a Lumaquad just to see what happens. Because I think if I hit him two or three times, that should be enough. I'm not really worried about dying, mainly because I have the ribbon to kind of neutralize those attacks. Well, let's see what Lumaquad does. That's a hit. That's a miss. 
That's a hit. And that's a hit. Nice. What is the name of the Academy's director? That would be Hartania. Hartania is the uh, non-binary NPC. And uh, we just won. Well, I guess there's just one more thing to do here. And uh, we can't afford Lumba quite anymore, so we'll just beat them off with the, uh, the old school Lumba Mansi. I keep gaining so much HP. Can't afford that. We could just use Nutromancy, maybe that'll do the trick. Alright, nice. Alright. So now, Iraq is a little bit leveled higher up than the uh, other allies. So, however you want to play that in terms of leveling them up slightly differently, um, you know, whatever works best for you. Well done, Iraq. You are definitely worthy of my half of the Sage Medallion. Thank you, but you wish that your allies were here? I wish that my friends were here, yes. We've arrived at our destination. How did you all get here? I thought you were trapped in the room with the colored crystal walls. The horses helped us out. Yes, all the horses we passed earlier suddenly entered the room we were in. They stepped on the buttons for us and made the crystal disappear so that we could search for you. And then this horse led us here. I can take you all back to the entrance when you're ready to depart. After you leave, we'll be closing down Stimfy Station for the foreseeable future. You can't go back into this dungeon, not that you're missing anything at this point. But you've already gained all of the treasure and experience we have to offer. Before I forget, do you want a mango? No, thank you. Did we miss your battle, Iraq? Did you win? Yes, Iraq bested me in a battle of wits. Way to go, Iraq. As promised, here is your reward. You obtained one of the two Sage Medallion halves. Sage, right half, has been completed. That was one of the eight uh, medallion quests that we received from the Meta Reference Mansion's uh, second NPC. I think it's time we headed out. Thanks again, Queen Qualia Quesnelia. You're welcome and good luck. Now, every time you end up receiving one of the eight medallion pieces, it procs an additional cutscene. And the cutscene is broken up into really eight parts for Sprig, eight parts for Marion, eight parts for Mero, and eight parts of Iraq. And depending on the order in which you earn each of the eight medallion halves, you'll see kind of bits and pieces of different cutscenes. Uh, eventually, once you have all the pieces, you'll get the full cutscene for each of them. Um, but everything will kind of be out of order, or there'll be gaps in the memories, in the memory cutscenes here. But it always starts with saying, with each medallion piece, I keep being reminded who I'm fighting for, why I'm on this journey. Now, the piece I just got, the right half of the Sage Medallion, is literally the eighth piece in each memory cutscene. And so we're basically going to have seven gaps in a row, and then an eighth part of the cutscene, and then seven gaps in a row, and then an eighth part of the cutscene for each character. This can get pretty long. You'll see it rotates through the colors, purple, blue, orange, and gray again, representing purple being strength, blue being skill, orange being soul, and gray being sage, uh, the colors of the medallion pieces. This is the final piece of Sprig's cutscene. Now these do get long once you have four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. And so, once we get enough, I'll probably start speeding up uh, these cutscenes. Um, you can just speed it up by holding on the spacebar or the left mouse. That's Sprig's entire situation. This is Mero's entire situation. Again, we start with seven gaps, and then we'll eventually get to Mero's final piece here. This is the part of Mero's memory that you do get to see with just, just one medallion piece, that medallion piece being the right half of the Sage Medallion. So this piece, this part will repeat every time you get a new medallion piece, but then there'll be an additional second, an additional third, an additional fourth part of her eight part memory. Now we have Iraq. Purple, blue, orange, gray, purple, blue, orange, and then we have the second gray piece, the right half of the Sage Medallion, so that part is going to be filled in. There is music in the back of the cutscene. I don't know if you can hear it.
Some of these parts are longer than others. You might remember after um, we got the ship, this rotation of colors, purple, blue, orange, gray, purple, blue, orange, gray. That was the very end of the um, first sequence of cutscenes. Kind of like, why can't I remember what's going on? What are these memories? Um, and then the medallions are helping them to each remember pieces and pieces and pieces of their kind of backstory, of the history, of a whole bunch of other things that uh, will progress as you continue gaining more medallion pieces. If you talk to the book, it says this book is now open to a page about experiences that are considered to be inconceivable. There's nothing else to do here. There's no other hidden items or anything of that nature. And so I can take you all back to the entrance when you're ready to depart. After you leave, we're closing it down. If you click very fast, I have it automatically on basically don't move anywhere. Because obviously if you're speeding through dialogue, you don't want to accidentally exit a level if you're not ready. So you kind of always have to make the conscious move to click below and then click back above to say, I want to leave. And then, yes, I really want to leave. So I'm going to save. We're almost done with um, what I want to do in this episode. I have no more mangoes. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to run back and get more mangoes. And then just knock out a couple other little things, and then that'll then we'll call it uh, we'll call it for this episode because the other dungeons are a little bit longer than Stimfy Station, I think, and so it just makes sense to knock out these little uh, side quests first. Uh, now, for the record, if we're speedrunning the game, uh, I haven't sat down and figured out which mangoes should be done immediately, and I would consider this to be pretty much immediately, as opposed to. Um, which mangoes should be done once you get the airship, because the airship does fly a lot faster. And so you, you don't have to have the final 16th mango of the game be the one that goes to the king, who ends up giving you the airship in the postgame. You can give him an earlier mango. Like, I gave away three mangoes at the beginning of this episode, and I could have saved any of those and not actually spoken to those NPCs yet. One, two... Three. Once you draw the final mango, uh, then we will have completed the Mango Mischief tutorial. You'll notice here, the sage right half has been completed. It's gray. <laughs> You'll also notice I color-coded the heck out of this journal. So as far as completing things, blue is Marion's color here. So you'll see it there. You'll see it with the uh, tutorials here. You'll see purple is Sprig, orange is Marrow, and gray is Iraq, whether we're talking about the class tree, the classes and skills, the master classes, the medallion piece, or uh, the very uh, beginning intro quest. So it's it might not be too hard if you care about that context clue to figure out, all right, when it's time for a strength medallion piece, that's Sprig's color. He'll be doing the solo attack, uh, the solo battle against the boss. And the skills will be Marion, and so will be Marrow. And they're kind of color-coded with um, kind of the uniforms they're wearing, too. You can see a little bit more purple, uh, teal, orange, kind of with the hair, even though the hair is more of a light brown, and uh, gray from Iraq. I just kind of wanted to avoid the, the typical like red, yellow, regular blue, and green. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get rid of three more mangoes, as well as the four other fairy quests. We're just going to take care of that right away. That way we don't have to worry about it, uh, worry about any of those later on. We'll have pretty much all of the uh, rewards that we could possibly get outside of the dungeons. So, just a few more minutes. Going to track down the three mango individuals and the fairies, the four fairy quests. I'm not going to bother talking to the four fairies because I, I know how to get their rewards anyway. I don't need the um I don't need to talk to them first. And their journal entry will be automatically completed anyway. Um, even if I don't talk to the fairy. Another snowdrift? We know what to do. So I'm gonna hold down spacebar here just to show you how fast 
the uh, Everflame can actually break these uh, snow pieces. This is me holding down spacebar. It would be about half the speed if I didn't hold it down. Technicalix all. Technicalix is an item that gives you 100 TP, which might be useful if you're about to go into like a boss battle or some other battle where you need to be uh, at full TP gauge. Technicalix all does it for everyone. What are you doing out here in the cold? The eight of us are trying to figure out where to go next on our journey. Now, I'm wondering if you'll be able to hear their uh, sound effects. Um, their sound effects are worthwhile if you get to them, if you can hear them. Sorry, but the eight of you? I only see three of you. Where are the other five? We're only allowed to have three of us visible and battle at any one time, so the other five magically disappear until we want to rotate them in. So you have a team of eight fighters, but you're only fielding three at a time? That's exactly right. Why handicap yourselves like that? It's just the way things are done, referencing a lot of Final Fantasy games and Dragon Quest games, and really most games where you have a, a large roster and are only allowed to pick a few at a time. Even if your objective is to win a lot of battles, you're kind of handicapping yourself by only purposely fielding a couple at a time. Just the way things are done. Arbitrary restrictions like that always seemed odd to me, especially during a battle where the objective is to actually win. Anyways, if we gave you a mango, would you give us a reward? Give us a second to ask everyone. Yes, we would reward you for a mango. Well then, please enjoy this one. Why, thank you. We hope you accept these gifts as a token of our gratitude. Ice necklace and thunder necklace obtained. Mango 10 has been completed. So, ice necklace and thunder necklace um, gives you significant resistance to ice and thunder, respectively. That's uh, one of the three mangoes we'll be uh, giving away right now. We'll head over here to the Whirlpool Hidden Haven area, where we'll get to give away another mango. Uh, this is not maximum efficiency in terms of uh, optimizing pathing or anything like that. I just want to reveal where all of the uh, mangoes are located all together. That way, if you're missing one specific area, you don't have to search through multiple uh, episodes. Mmm. Mango. That spirit is kind of freaky. This distressed soul would like a mango. Well, let's give him one. It appears they have finally found peace. They left these behind. Fire necklace and water necklace obtained. Mango 11 has been completed. I believe you get one of every necklace. If you think uh, that distressed soul is freaky, just wait until you get to the old woman, which we're going to do next. I guess I don't really have to go all the way around this way. Let me go back up. We're going to take care of the space-time race climb, this place, um, next. Spree is now level 2, and Arak's level 5. So, we'll just keep a rack at that level for a little while, until everyone else catches up to, like, level 5. Hello, children. Uh, hey there, ancient creepy lady. I have been traveling for about a thousand years, I presume? Through time and space, obviously. How else could you possibly travel? What other options are there? To try and find... What are you trying to find? A mango. It's always a mango. Here, take this mango. Thank you. Earth necklace and wind necklace obtained. Not a bad trade. Mango 12 has been completed, and she's just really fast right now. Thank you for the mango. We'll head back here after. We're just going to do the fairy quests, which should just take another few minutes. There are four fairy quests. The four arcane fairies are located in the southwest area, over here in this general vicinity, like on the N Island, as well as the Infernal Inferno area. I don't have to talk to any of them because I know where I'm going. Um, one of the quests tells you to head right below this crater. Mythic Van Braces and Mythic Teko Kage obtained. I think that's how you pronounce it. The treasure hunt quests are the fairy quests. There's some invisible enemies, kind of like how in uh, you know, the original Pokemon games there were some invisible enemies. There's one right here in the middle of this small island. Uh, stat boosts, um, some stat items. And there are other two other quests here. You start on either the bottom right island and head... Sorry. The bottom right island and you head due east.
So you just keep going here. You should be able to thread all these islands until you hit a wall. And that should be where the next treasure is. You have to stand on that bottom right island, though. Um, if you don't get out of the ship, it won't actually uh, get this moving. We just got 10 elite elixirs. Uh, elite elixirs uh, remove all status ailments from a character. And so if, let's say, Sprig is poisoned and paralyzed um, and blinded, uh, the elite elixir can solve all of those problems at once. The top left island, and then moving west and then north, gives you the other treasure hunt. And uh, that's essentially it. So we're going to head back to the space-time race, actually. We're going to do one more thing just to be annoying. We're going to get the final mango. That way we don't have to backtrack later on. You're so close to finishing up. So obviously the backtracking two or three times to get the rest of the mangoes might not be the best use of one's time if you're trying to beat this game as fast as possible. Maybe the last six mangoes I got probably weren't all that um, necessarily uh, necessary uh, early on. Or maybe getting a few of them, like uh, the East Haversine Condominium's sixth floor, where we had to write in Euler's last name. Maybe that's worthwhile, because otherwise there's no other reason to go back into the condo. Um, but once you get the airship, you can travel all over the place much faster. Final mango obtained. You have completed a tutorial for your journal. And that is, of course, the Mango Mischief tutorial. We have one mango left, which uh, we're not going to be using for a very, very long time. Healing just because, although I'm not sure if I needed to. And we're going to end this episode back at the space-time race climb, where we're going to begin the next episode racing through the four different very, very small, short regions of the space-time race climb, uh, hopefully dodging most battles, um, and just getting the treasures that are uh, that appear in each one. Actually, before I do that, we are actually going to... Hmm, actually, you know, we'll do that. We'll head back to the Northeast Forest another time. Because I'm just thinking how long the uh, later episodes will end up being. Get out of my way, thank you. So we're going to end off in the space-time race climb. Eventually, we'll end up heading back to the Northeast Forest to get that one extra treasure chest that was uh, blocked off originally. There's a bunch of werewolves and minotaurs there that are pr uh, pretty strong that I don't really want to face right now. So we are just going to stop here. Um, by the way, these light beams, um, you can open up, or you can pop them at multiple, uh, you can pop them without waiting for the previous one to finish. So you can kind of get moving. You can kind of go back and forth. We want access to all four of these. You'll notice here that on purpose, there is a, a one, a two, a three, and four energies, uh, blocking the way, because... That represents the difficulty level of the monsters in there. So a level 1.0 monster is pretty easy to kill compared to level 4.0 monsters. You can verse 4.0 level monsters at any time you want. Um, you might get your butt kicked, but if you want to try to grind out some really, really high experience, you can absolutely fight these monsters earlier. I put this place in as kind of a failsafe in case you somehow manage to rush through so many dungeons that... The enemies scaling up became too difficult and you wanted to actually fight earlier level monsters. A peculiar place, an optional mission, a mysterious monster juxtaposition. Beasts from eight regions pair up in each zone, based on the colored swirls that are shown. Although each monster carries no item, golden experience are still won if you fight them. Plus, all four lanes will lead to treasure and each battle highway has a timeless measure. The path on the left will stay at level 1, whether you have all four medallions or none. The same goes for the path on the right, level 4, a difficulty rating that you should not ignore. Alright, this time I promise we're done. Episode 8 is finished. I will see you next time for Space Time Race Climb and the second dungeon for the second medallion half. Take care. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more clips about Mango Mischief, 
please like this video and subscribe to my channel. The Steam link for my game, as well as all Mango Mischief social media links, are posted in this video's description. I think you'll enjoy my satirical, retro-style, turn-based JRPG, and if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments section below. Thanks!